Okay, this is a water drum. It was made or used by the Eastern Native American tribes in the East. Tribes in the West, they made their drums with uh, ceramic bases, clay pots. These average size maybe four. This is a four inch drum and uh, I have them up to five inches. There's water inside, that's what this plug is for, and uh, about a quarter to a half inch of water. Leather is uh, <clears throat> uh, usually like a buckskin. Um, since I didn't have buckskin, I'm using sheepskin, which is uh, about similar thickness. It's wet and it's stretched real tight. This band is made with uh, wood splits. I have uh, ash wood. When you're done using it, you pull the plug and drain the, the water. Let me show you how it's made. To make it wood really uh, waterproof, you, you can use epoxy resin. Here I'm using a fast set. And what I'm going to do is mix alcohol with this. This will thin it and it'll help it penetrate into the wood. Alcohol will uh, be a solvent for epoxy resin. Okay, you want to mix it real well. This is a 50-50 mix. This will penetrate deep into the wood because of the alcohol. You can also clean your brush with alcohol and to get the epoxy resin out. I'm also going to use beeswax on the inside. That is a very good waterproofing agent. The best waterproofing is you give it a, a, the first coat with this diluted epoxy resin. Then you give a second coat within 24 hours of just straight epoxy. To waterproof the inside of this from. I'm using a chunk of beeswax and a heat gun. Okay, once it's melted, I don't have the drain hole drilled yet. I'm coating the inside. Here's the beeswax coating on the inside. Not only does it make it very good water resist, it smells good too. Now this 
uh, split ash, I am going to roll this around part way down because we need room for the leather. And since it's larger diameter here, that should give us the room. Okay, that mark is going to be where I am starting the glue line, right there. So I'm using a waterproof glue. This is a Type Bond 3. I like to get three layers of this wood for the strength. It glue up, it's not perfectly round, but that shouldn't be a concern. This will flex after it's dried and it's going to be wrapped. So uh, once it's uh, pushed onto the drum head, uh, it will hold its shape. The wax you can see in here. Um, I rolled it around the entire interior and I used enough that it soaked the end grain so that will block any moisture from getting in. The hole that you drill, you need to have it slightly below center because this band is going to push down over and you can't have the plug in the way of the band. Okay, the band, three layers of the uh, ash wood, and it's not perfectly round, but that doesn't matter, this flexes enough. And you see that I have it tapered by about a quarter inch. So as it pushes down, it will tighten up. Also, if the band is a little bit too loose, you just take some tape and wrap it. Any tape would work. And then you wrap it with your material, the decorative material. The fabric that I'm using is cotton and you can buy it by the yard. And it's fairly cheap. This is a yard. This was much smaller. This was only, it was under two dollars at Walmart. This is about five dollars and you can get a large variety of different types of materials. I'm going to use this purple on this drum. So quite a bit of material here and here is a native type pattern. When you cut this material, you want to cut it about, I would say about an inch and a quarter. And I'll show you how you handle the edges. The edges have a tendency to fray. And there's a method to take care of that fraying. Okay, this, I'm going to take care of this real rough edge. What you want to do is use a glue stick. That costs about 30 cents a piece. So very cheap. So just hit this edge with the glue stick. And then fold roughly a quarter inch over. That's going to leave you about an inch, maybe slightly less, of material that you're going to treat as like a ribbon. Then I like to Put a layer of glue stick on the band.
Okay, now as you're wrapping, that folded edge sticks is what's exposed on the outside edge. So there won't be any fraying from this material from the wrap. And at the end, I'll show you how I treat the end of this. If you run short, you just cut another piece of material and splice it in. The splice, I already folded the edge. And we wrap it. I put the leading edge on the inside. You want to come maybe an inch beyond. Okay, now with the end of this, we're going to leave some hanging down as a ribbon. just like that. The top of the drum you want to use a tanned hide and ideally it would be buckskin. If you don't have access to buckskin uh, you can use sheepskin. This is what I have here, tanned sheepskin. Okay now you need to leave about two inches hanging over the end all the way around the perimeter. So I'm going to mark roughly two inches. Okay, and then I'm going to cut out a circle. It doesn't have to be perfectly round, that's okay. And the smooth side goes down there. I see a flaw, a cut in the tanning process. Okay, the band slid over and the leather is tightened by pulling on the outside. You can wet the leather, pull down on the sides, get it real taut, about a half inch of water inside. Get the plug in so you don't lose the water. Ideally you want to use dry wood. If you don't have dry wood, you just have to make do with what you have. The plug, I'm going to cut this off. Right about there. And for the beater, I think I'll use this piece. This is uh, uh, locust, and it's very good uh, hardwood and rot resist. So this will be the beater, this will be the plug. A little bit of whittling. I like to not have the edges squared. So I cut a chamfer. If the bark wants to adhere, you can leave the bark on. It gives it some character. If not, trim it down to the bare wood. This plug, when you whittle it, you want it to have a slight taper also, so as you push it in, it tightens. there, pushed a little bit of wax out, that's perfect, and I like the looks of it. The drumstick, I'm going to leave the bark on again, I'll let this thicker end be the handle end, 
And again, I want to chamfer these edges. The pruning shear bruises the bark, so that area will not be sticking, so this cutting should take that bruised area off. The lower half, we need to remove the bark and also whittle the diameter down slightly. Not being perfectly straight, I like it because it gives it a little bit more character. And again, I want to soften this edge by making it somewhat rounded by chamfering. Make a, a deeper cut like this. Then you come part way up and then go around make shorter cuts. I don't want any of the cambrium on this area. So I'm scraping that off. That looks good. Now we need th this wood to dry. Hopefully we can dry it without it cracking. Uh, there's a couple methods that I do. One is I boil it. With small items like this you can boil. And uh, what that will do is um, heat the wood up, heat the uh, moisture that's inside, get it to a uh, vapor temperature where it will remove a lot of it. The other method is put it in a microwave, short bursts, and it will heat the inside up, also push a lot of the moisture out. You just have to be careful in the microwave. Um, you can pop it apart, um, get it too dry, you can catch them on fire. So, or just leave it in a, out of the sun in a uh, place inside and let it dry slowly. So that's the easiest way. And then cross your fingers, hope it doesn't split, hope it holds together. Be in a smaller diameter, you have a good chance that it may dry without cracking. Microwave Put your pieces in and short bursts. I do 30 seconds and you'll hear popping every once in a while. That's moisture trying to escape. Uh, you'll see a lot of steam at, just after 30 seconds. So then after one heating, I'd leave it sit and cool because the moisture is still trying to escape from the inside then I hit it again. And I'll do that a few times and that'll get most of the moisture out. See it's sweating. Hot. I'll let that cool down and then hit it again. Do it again. The reason wood cracks is the wood dries as it, the wood dries from the outside um, and when it dries it shrinks so it's drying around a larger volume and that shrinkage is what pushes the crack. The microwave is heating from the inside so it's heating all the wood uniformly. Boiling will do the same thing. You heat the entire piece of wood, you boil it for a good while uh, the moisture wants to evaporate and that will push it from the inside out. I've done that successfully. Still taking the moisture out. Very hot. A piece of ribbon that was left over. I already have the edge folded. Okay, just like that. And the stick here is dried. in the microwave. Okay, this last wrap here, what I'm going to do 
is come through, make a half turn like this. and that will terminate it.